or welcome to another AQA A level chemistry video. Today I'm going to make a video on rate equations. This is going to be a two part video. First of all, I just want to just say that uh, with rate equations, it's quite a, at first it's quite a tricky topic, but over time, I don't want to say over time, you'll get, once you get the hang of it, you'll, you'll get it, uh, because that's, that's a pretty obvious statement. Um, but what I will say, it doesn't take too long to get the grasp of it, I would say, because uh, it involves a bit, a little bit of maths, getting the hang of it. Um, but if you're not, if your son doesn't really struggle too much with maths, then it won't be too much of a problem. But I definitely say, like I said with, with other topics, if you really want to truly understand a topic, you've got to do exam questions. And I guess I'll do when I when I finish um, physical year two, I'll be doing exam questions. By the way, uh, if you didn't see a post that I put on my YouTube, my YouTube channel, I did say um, I won't be continuing with the exam questions for organic year two until after a certain day because i've got uh, an interview coming up so just a little disclaimer for that but i'll get but, but enough of me talking now i will get into this video uh this one i just want to say uh, lastly before i start this video when I, we're talking about rate equations there is a, an equation you need to know with uh, logarithms but they they give you that in your exam so but if you do exam questions you're able to know that ex that, that equation off by the uh, off by the top of your head um, but it includes logarithms. If you're not comfortable with logarithms, logarithms and maths and all that, don't worry. Like, as long as you remember the equation, you'll be fine. Um, I, I'm fine with logarithms because I did A level maths, so it's not a problem for me. But, um, yeah, it's not as complex as it seems. Uh, all you need to know is general concepts of, of rate equations. But mostly when I see question, when I see questions in AQA A level chemistry regarding rate equations, uh, it's often just to do with uh the calculation there will be some uh, periods where they ask you to explain the rate the the order of a reaction for example based off looking at a graph so they may ask you to uh look at a graph and explain why it looks like that so there are a few questions but generally with rate equations is mostly to do with statistics graphs um and uh using equations but anyway i've done enough talking now that that concept of it will mostly be in, in the second part of this video I'm just going to be going through the, uh, what is, I'll be going through the basics of rate equations in this first, um, in this first, uh, video. Now, uh, reaction rates, so reading rate, rate graphs, right? Uh, reaction rates can be measured over time, where you plot this data on graphs and you need to be able to read them. Uh, definitions of a rate. A rate of reaction is, is defined as the change in concentration of a reactant or pro product over time. This means that if you plot concentration against time, the rate is the gradient of the graph. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Everyone should know that from basic maths. Um, the 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 gradient the gradient. Well, if you plot a graph of uh concentration in the uh y-axis and time on the x-axis, and you're you're just measuring the the rate of the graph is to how much that concentration has changed within a certain time period, i.e. in that case, it will literally just be the relationship between the x and y axis which the y and x axis which should just be the gradient and that's and that's pretty I mean, it's pretty straightforward right uh when you're talking about the rate rate the rate is determined by the gradient so this should say the the graph below Ooh. sorry about that I should have done this when I had the chance. We have a typo there. Yeah, but the graph below is a straight line graph. So to show to show this basic concept, you should know it by now. But I'm just gonna go through a little little bit quickly. So a simple graph, right? Uh, a graph below is a straight line graph showing the concentration against time. To calculate the gradient of the graph and the rate, technically, which is the gradient of the graph is just the rate, right? You find the change in concentration divided by the change in time. Uh, in practice, you just pick two points to read off the X and Y values, calculate the difference in concentration of values and the time values, and the time and then values, and then divide the one by the other. I've, I've made that sound really complex and it really is. All you're doing is just you're finding a two points, uh, difference in Y over difference in X, so rise of a run, right? So for this in this scenario here, it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I've got a little ruler here, but all you're doing is just difference in y. 
Let me just get like a little, yeah. Difference in y over difference in x equals the rate. And the rate is represented by r. Now, you don't have to do, you can just do straight from, you know, work out difference in here and then the difference here. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit too large of a sample, but all you can just do, uh, which is something you already know about anyway, it's just about going, finding two points, so the, the two the crosses there, saying the difference in y. And then a difference in x. Difference in y over the difference in x, i.e. the change, the difference in y represents the change in concentration. What should you say? I mean, you already know that delta y, delta represents this tri the triangle in Greek, uh, in Greek just means change. So, um, so delta just means change. So change in y, which means, and y represents the concentration. So just change in concentration. I represent it by conch, uh, which means concentration, over the difference in x, which represents the change in time, because the x actually represents time. So delta the x just means change in time. You should already know this by now, but I just wanted to write out here just to make it extremely clear. Difference in x, so difference in y over difference in x, change, rise over run, um, would represent the change in concentration over the change in time. Um, and yeah, that's it. Or say change in time over a time period. Time, change in time, time period. You've probably already skipped to the next part of this video. I don't blame you because it's just it's pretty basic. But I'll leave that now. So that's for a basic graph. Now, realistically, if we're all being honest with ourselves, it's very, I mean, it's not very unrealistic to get a graph like this, uh, but in practical terms, you're never going to get a constant uh, rate. You're never going to get a constant rate. So in this case, it's a constant decline, uh, very easy to read off. Uh, and you will get examples like that in, in, your, in, your, in your exam, but, if, but you're also going to get, and more likely to get more examples of curved graphs because in reality, your, uh, your reaction isn't constant. So curved graphs, right? So not all reaction rates are constant. Uh, a reaction rate may slow down or speed up with, with time. For a reaction like this, you get a curved graph. Uh, you can calculate the rate of any point in time by calculating the gradient of a point on the graph. To do this, you need to draw a tangent on the graph at this point. Uh, so drawing a tangent. So a tangent is a straight line which just touches the curve in one place. Uh, to draw the tangent, choose what your point and draw a straight line for it. Uh, you want to have an equal distance to the curve from the line on each point on each side of the uh, of the point. So an example will be here below, right? So before I actually explain this example, all this is just saying is that um, because the rate of reaction is constantly changing in this example, this is this. I mean, even this, although although the the although this this is an example of a curved graph where the rate of reaction is constantly changing. At least the, the the way that it's changing is still rather consistent. If that makes any sense, i.e., um, it's quite a it's quite a consistent curve, which means that the rate of the reaction is uh changing in a consistent manner. I know people are saying that doesn't make any sense to me. This, for example, if I was doing, if this was a graph I did here, right? Terrible little graph here. This is still quite easy to because this, if this, if I did a graph like this, right? It's, it's a bit harder in terms of the fact that the rate of the graph isn't changing. The rate of reaction is changing in a very inconsistent manner or very, or even worse. You get a graph that's like, you know, that's like, that's, these, this is what I mean when I say, um, though this is a, the rate of the reaction is constantly changing, it's changing in a rather consistent manner, uh, which makes it very easy to read off. Now, the whole point of doing a tangent is because we're trying to work out the rate of the reaction at that specific point in time. So in your exam, they may ask you, 
what was the rate of the reaction at, let's say, three seconds here, which is this example here. We then, what we do, if we want to work out the rate of the reaction at that point in time, we will then draw a point, uh, which is, I did a little green dot there, it could be a little cross, and then we draw a tangent, which touches the, the graph at that one point. Now, maybe it's slightly difficult uh, to get exactly, exactly at that point, but they'll, they'll give you leeway if you show that you're trying to get uh, as accurately to that point as possible. And in this case, I've tried to do that here. Uh, yeah, at this I've tried to do that here with with this example. Uh, they, they as long as you show you, you try to get as accurate to that point, they'll be fine. Like, I know it's kind of touching other points here. They accept human error, right? So don't worry too much about that. But try to show you you've shown an example of um, trying to draw a tangent that only touches the graph at that point. If you've done maths, then doing a tangent shouldn't be difficult for you. But uh, I've tried to draw this graph myself, so. Um, I think I've done a reasonably good job, but anyway, that's what a tangent is. Just a, a, a where the line touches the the gradient, the graph at, at that point, right? But try to make your graph equal at both sides, so that it's easier for you to. So if I only if I stopped here, right? Oh, if I stopped here, or and I continue making that one here, it makes it harder for me to make a, a to gain an accurate example of my, um, gain an accurate example of. The, the gradient because if I was if I was if I do it here I may realize that uh I may have under undid my value or because you might you might hit a value that's because you're doing you're gonna be doing this on graph paper right so if you stop if you if you're, if you're doing this on graph paper right and your line stops here it's like you'll say to yourself is that 0.5 is that 0.4 whereas if you did it in the entire way or making an equal distance uh, equal distance at some point your graph's going to continue and you might even land at a point where it's like you accurately hit an edge. Like that, that doesn't accurately hit the edge. Um, and I've kind of like tinted that one there, but that doesn't, that doesn't accurately hit the point here, but it does hit it here. And it just means that if you're just trying to do your, your gradient, um, you get an accurate value for the difference in X and an accurate value for the difference in Y. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna say. That just makes it, it's just a little something that makes it a bit easier for you. But this is what your graph is gonna is gonna look like in general, right? Uh, you just have your your t uh, your graph, your tangent, and then you'll just be doing difference in x, which I've done by uh, so difference in y, which represents the this is the blue the blue dotted lines are representing my difference in y, uh, and then over the difference in x or the, the time period. In this case, the time period that we're looking at here uh, is between uh, one and five, which is represented by the gray dotted lines here. Um, and from that, we, from that we, we've been able to get to, so if we're doing difference in Y, right? So difference in Y is, let's say it looks like 0 0.21 minus 0, so 0 0.21 minus 0 0.1 equals 0 0.11. Difference in x is equal to uh, what, 5 minus 1, which is just equal to 4. So then the gradient, or m, is equal to, or the m would be equal to r in this case. So 0 0.11 over 4. Now this is a a very um, this is a very uh, what's it called um. I I mean I I haven't got the exam examples of zero point two one zero point two two zero point three three so zero point sorry zero point two one zero point two two zero point two three so on and so on but I believe that's zero point um, two one there. And so I I believe it's zero point one one over four and that is calculate when you put that into a calculator you get a value of. 0 0.275 now if we're working the, the we the x-axis here the y-axis here has gra grams so we can't forget our units uh so the mass of the product is in grams and our time is in seconds so our rate would be in our, our the rate the, the rate of the reaction is 0 0.275 grams per second and of course, people should know how to convert between grams to decimeters cubed. Uh, we have all, all that, you know, 
don't worry about too much things. They'll make it very explicit what they're wanting to do. In this case, it's just 0 0.2. The rate of reaction is uh, plus or positive. You have to put the plus there, but you know, it's it's, like, it's an upward going curve. So it's so the way, so the proper way of saying it is that at point A or at three seconds, um, the rate of the reaction is approximately 0 0.275 grams per second. I say approximately because technically this is we're doing a tangent is the most isn't the most accurate way of determining the rate of the reaction at that point if you do maths you know about differentiation and all of that but you don't have to worry about that in 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 uh, aqa level chemistry uh doing a tangent is perfectly fine to determine the rate of the reaction at that specific point now i'm going to go on now because i don't want to waste your time too much rate equations so you can calculate the, the rates of reaction by finding their rate equations these links the uh, concentration of each reactant to the rate of the to the rate of sorry to the rate of the equation. So physical basis. So reactions happen when reactions happen when molecules collide into one another, right? So in a reaction between say molecules A and B, say we have reaction A plus B, right? Uh, the react the actual reaction is when A and B collide together. So in a reaction between molecules A and B the rate will be proportional to the number of collisions between A and B. That just makes sense, right? If we if we double the, the amount of collisions between A and B, we're therefore doubling the rate of the reaction. If we half the number of collisions between A and B, we're therefore technically halving the rate of the reaction. So that's all it is. That's that's the mindset of thinking, right? So I say it's, it's, it's here, right? I, I, didn't really, I completely forgot that I've had that written here. But if you double the concentration of uh, B. Also, it's even just like just. So for, sorry, I'm gonna go back. So what I said about the doubling the, uh, the doubling the number of collisions. That's true, but the way that we double the, if you think back to year one, uh, chemistry, the ways that we affect the rate of the reaction. Right, all we're doing is that we're trying to all the different ways of of changing the rate of the reaction, are to do with how we increase or decrease the. A number of collisions you can double the concentration which is the example that i have here so if you double the concentration of b uh you should have you should have doubled the collisions between a and b right so that's that's that one example you can also increase temperature pressure um so temperature pressure concentration uh can't remember, we already said catalysts don't affect the rate of the reaction so they don't affect the So you know, catalysts do affect the rate of the reaction. I I so I I catalyst, catalysts do affect the rate of the reaction. Uh, yeah, my bad. Sorry, they do. I, I was thinking about equilibrium. They did, catalysts affect the rate of the reaction, but they don't affect equilibrium. That's something different. But either way, my point being that we, we're, the basic understanding is that you have to understand that the rate of reaction is turned by the number of collisions, and there's different ways to affect that by uh, changing the environment of the reaction. However. So if you have, for example, if we want to, if you double the concentration of B, right, you should have double the collisions between A and B, right? So you would expect the reaction rate to double. In reality, this is an oversimplification because you have multiple steps in most reactions, which may or may not involve each molecule. And before I'm going to go on to the rate equation below, there's just something I want to like clear up, right? So, so I want to kind of like go to this point here, which is... Um, you have multiple steps in most reactions. Now, this means that, for example, so it's something that's I'm going to come on, on to the next in in the part two of this video. I'll be talking about why this isn't the case. Why, why um, or I'll be so I'll I'll explain about this in more detail, right? Uh, but having multiple steps, uh, it was something called the rate determining step. Uh, it's the slowest part of the reaction. It's the the the, the part of the reaction that affects the rate of the reaction. I'm not going to go into much detail of it now. I'll go into more detail when I uh, eventually talk about it, but that is quite important because if if for example you have a reaction between A and B, but uh, B isn't part of your rate determining step, it means that no matter how much you increase B, if it's not part of your rate rate determining step. Is not going to be part of your rate equation. If it's not part of your rate equation, it means that uh, no matter how much you change the concentration of B, for example, if, if B is not part of the rate determining step, uh, it will, uh, changing the concentration of B or changing anything to do the environment of B will have no effect on the rate of, of the reaction. Um, 
uh, but I'll be going to that in more detail. For this for this example here, assume that A and B are both equally part of the reaction. Um, because I've just given this this example here. But uh in theory, all I wanted you to understand is that the rate of reaction is just proportional to the number of collisions uh between A and B, if uh for example. But uh, just keep in mind that when I go to go to the part two video, this comes this uh, is an oversimplification because remember there's multiple steps and I will explain them in more detail about this point but just understanding that basic point about the number of collisions and how that's determining the rate of the reaction. Now the rate equation here is a rate equation is always written in the form of for example rate is equal to k times by a to the power of m uh, times by b to the power of n. Now if you're so confused about what it is I'll go through that what that is um, I'll go through what those actually mean. One second. Sorry, I had a little bit of a, just doing a couple of things here, for example. One second, one second. Sorry, I'm also streaming in the background uh, for my Twitch, which will be, is my Twitch in the background? I think my Twitch isn't in the in the description. I do porn with streams, a little quick plug, but I'll, I'll, I'll continue this now. So uh, I'll go through it in more detail here. But um, if you're confused what M and N are, so let's say, um, okay, so first, can I do actually this? I can, I can do that. Yeah, okay, I just wanted to see if I could do that. So say the reaction for A to B was, say, this, right? So A, oh, that's not what I wanted. A plus B goes to form C plus D. Uh, a is this, when you see a square bracket, you should know that A would represent the concentration of A. And when you see a square bracket around B, it means the concentration of B. M and N represent the order of the reaction. I'm going to go through that later a bit down here. But um, M and N are the, if you want to know what they are, is literally the same as if you've done if you've done equilibrium constants right because think about it here so this k is a constant if you think about the equilibrium constant when i was talking about um uh the, the kc for concentration or k I, I haven't gone through kp but i'll go through kp soon enough but the order here think more to towards the equilibrium constant when i did that video uh, it's just the moles now it means a slightly different thing here because we're talking about reaction rates is not a, so it's slightly different in terms of the meaning, but in terms of when you're doing a calculation, if you have two moles of A, your A would be squared. If you have two moles of B, it'd be B squared. In this case here, it's, it's one mole of A and one mole of B. So it's A to the power of one, but in maths, you never really write something to the power of one. You just say A and uh, B. I've just shown M and N here just to show, uh, not M and M, so I've shown M and an N here to show you um, that they are there, um, so they don't kind of mis uh, misconfuse it. But I've got an M and an N here to show you that, that that's what they represent there. Right, I'll leave that alone. So K is a rate constant. Uh, that's what K represents there. The number, the numbers M and N tell you, uh, how the rate depends on the reactants. So how so the orders in this case, uh. They're there to to tell you how much. How how by how much the rate depends on those reactants. So if it's a squared, uh, that's showing you how much the how much uh, of a affects the rate of the reaction. Um. It's almost double. It's it's almost like a uh. So if if it's a squared, if if I, that means that if I double the concentration of a. Say, say this reaction was 2A plus uh, B to form C plus D, right? It would mean that if, say, A was equal to 2, so say A, say A was, sorry, if it's 2A plus B to form C plus D, that means N would, M would be equal to, to 2, right? That means that if I was to double the concentration of A, so let's say I, I increased the, the concentration of A by 2, so it's 2A, Really, I'm actually quadrupling my reaction because it's actually now 2a squared times by b. So I'm actually quadrupling because 2, two squared, that's 4. So realistically, if 
if whatever whatever a is, but it's two two a, and then you're squaring it because we have doubled the, the the amount in moles of a. If that makes any sense, right? Uh, to be honest, it could be more than that. Whatever it is, is you have to do, remember, remember bid mass anyway. I say it's quadrupling it. If it's two times by two, that's four. Then squaring four would be like would be by sixteen, right? Anyway, the point being. And you're not going to... I mean, that's just an example. If you get two moles for A, you get my point. But you, you guys know how to do bid mass anyway. Do inside the brackets first and then the, the indices afterwards. But my point being here is that uh, you're, squ you're squaring uh, your value of A. Because in this example here, if I, had, if I change this to 2 here, and M was now represented by 2... Uh, we've double. We have doubled the amount in moles of a, and in, in technically in space, in space, we would therefore uh be increasing, uh the number of collisions of of a by a factor of uh square or by power of two. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much in about the theoretical nature of three D collisions and all that, and then collision theory and all of that. But that's why it's written by that, and that's what it represents. It means that uh. It's just showing you by how much the rate depends, the rate of the reaction is dependent on A, or how much the rate of the, how much uh, A affects the rate of the reaction. That's all. That's how. That's what. That's what the order is there to tell you. Um. Yeah. I'll leave that now. I'm gonna change these back to, um, back to where they were, M, and. Hopefully that made sense. If that didn't make sense to you, please leave a comment in the video and I'll explain uh, again what they mean in a bit more detail if you, if you are really struggling on that. So what R represents? R represents the rate of the reaction and its units are moles per dm cubed per second, which just makes sense. As I said before, um, the concentration here was represented in grams, but it could equally the mass of the product. Uh, this is because they're doing mass of the product here. But if it was concentration of product, it would be in moles per dm cubed. Um, so it makes sense that would be moles per dm cubed per second because it's the, the concentration, concentration, changing concentration over time. That makes sense. And that's represented by the purple arrow here. The red arrow is re is represents the rate constant. Now, the rate constant, I'll be going in a bit more detail in it. It's... it's um. I'll be going in a bit more detail now. I've got I've got it here below, but uh, if it's temperature dependent, it is different for different reactions. So different reactions will have a different rate constant. Um, and the units for rate constant vary depending on your uh, your reactants, and it could be a possibility that you have no units for your rate constant. It's something that you want you have to you have to work out, and it's something that. Uh, in the exam they constantly want you to work out and they want you to work out the units for it and it's very simple to do uh it's just about have to cancel out a couple of things because you, you have to do think about it. if you have to work if you have to rearrange this equation to work out k all you're doing is r over a times by b and you know the concentration is represented by the green arrow which is always going to be in moles per dm cubed what's well, it a and b by themselves be, be uh, moles per dm cubed but if you have any orders you might have to change that to moles squared per dm to the power of minus six all of the, these things here right it's, it's basic basic mass. i'll go for an example right i'll go for an example so that it makes a bit more sense to you um but the rate constant is very easy to work out i've made maybe made it sound a bit more complicated than it really is concentration changing the concentration depending on the order again not too difficult to do uh, the order of reaction, as I just say, is taken from the molar ratio. Uh, so this is just here to represent what they all mean. And I'll go through an example at the very end. So the order of the reaction, right? So just as we define an order of the reactants, we can define the or an, or, an overall order for the reaction. The overall order is given by M plus N. So overall, the overall order is just adding the two uh, orders of the reaction together. So if you have 2 and 1, or it never be 1, right? In the other example, 2 plus technically one to mean the overall order of the reaction is uh, three. Now, you very rarely get an any value above two when you're doing the order of your reaction. Uh, for AQA level chemistry, it's it's never, it's never very rarely above two. It's always two, 
or one really two or one you may get a you may get a half order i believe that is possible yeah you, you can get a half order if your reaction is half if your rate of reaction is, is increasing by a factor of uh, a half so you, re you very rarely get any value above two for an order with respect to a reactant or less than zero as well and you can get an order of, of zero as well uh, an order of zero if anything is to the order of zero of to the power of zero you already know that means that's equal to one if you're if you're timesing something by one it doesn't have any change i.e if you have an order of what of zero it means that that concentration has no effect on the rate of the reaction uh, but i'll go through more about um doing examples in the next in the next video i'll, I'll just do one example at the end for this but um i'll do more in the part two of this video so rate constant the rate constant k has a few key features it's temperature dependent it has different units for different reactions the units of the reaction rate have to be concentration over time but the units of the product of the reactants are never that are never that so you need to assign units to k to sort it out the larger the rate constant the faster the reaction so if you have a high fast if you have a higher value for k it means that you have a very fast it's proportional. The rate of reaction is proportional to the rate constant. The higher your rate is directly proportional to the rate constant, actually. So, um, the higher your rate constant, the the faster you, you the faster the rate of your reaction. The lower your, your rate constant, the lower your rate your rate of reaction. You can get rate constants. You can work out rate constants that are less than that are less than one, zero point three, whatever. You can get rate constants that are like fifty. So don't think that you're always going to get one that's always in a certain value. You just have to make sure you work it out accurately. Uh, but this part here is something they always... I've seen examples where they say, um, name something specific about a rate of rate, the, the rate constant. And it's just saying that it's temperature dependent. Like it is with um, when you're doing other, rate, other equilibrium constants. They're usually uh, temperature dependent. So calculation of rate equations. So you need to be able to do a whole bunch of calculations with uh, rate equations. So calculating the rate of a reaction. The rate of a reaction can be calculated if you know its rate constant, the reactant concentrations, uh, and, the, and the order of the reaction with respect to each reactant. So if a reaction obeys the equation, uh, rate is equal to KAB, uh, where the rate constant is 0 0.5 uh, de uh, decimeters cubed per mole, uh, per time t is just represents time uh which could be in seconds minutes usually in seconds and the reactant concentrations are both two moles per dm cubed the rate is two so I'll, I'll, should i go for an example here yeah i'll go for an example here so they've given you the information they want you to work out the rate of the reaction here in this case so they've given you the rate constant they've told you uh, what a and b are and they've given you the rate constant as well uh now usually uh, all they'll give you in the real exam, you have to work out what the rate constant is. Uh, you have to work out what the rate constant is, and I'll sh I'll show you how to do that in, in the next video, uh, or when I do. Uh, no, I should be I should be able to do that in the next video. In case I don't do it, then I'll definitely do one of the exam questions. Uh, but you also have to work out the the two things that they'll give you is they'll definitely give you. Uh, Actually, I can't even say they'll definitely give you the concentrations. They'll give you enough to answer the question. They may ask you, they may give you the rate equation. You may have to work out the rate equation for yourself. Uh, you, you're more than likely uh, have to work out the rate constant. But then again, they'll give you enough information to work out the rate constant. Uh, they may give you the very, very basics and expect you to do pretty much work out uh, everything Uh apart from with obviously with enough information to help you work out everything but they may it may be as simple as only working out the rate constant they may just ask only the rate constant and they give you everything else they may give you only you know they'll give they'll give that they i can't guarantee they'll give you this and they'll give you this but i will definitely say they'll definitely give you enough to answer the question but to emphasize my point in this example if pretty much been very very nice to you and they've, they've given you everything that you need apart from working out the rate uh, but just to emphasize the point that you may be put in an example where you have to work out a lot more and then, you know, work out certain things, working out the equation. You may have to work out the rate constant. You may have to work out more than one thing at a time. And there'll be like a six or six mark question where you have to do work out everything at a time. 
And then at the end of it, the part B to that question be now work out the rate if it was in so and so conditions. Now in this example here, I've got I'll just show you what they've done in this uh particular example here. So R is equal to they've given you K which is 0 0.5 with the rate constant 0 0.5. Uh they've given you A, they've told you the rate the the rectum concentration is above two mass per dm cubed. So it'd just be two times by two. I like to say two squared, but um, just showing the examiner that you understand uh, why you put the two and a two there. So I'd, in my calculator, I just do that straight away. But you know what you know, that's four, half of four. So the rate of reaction is equal to four moles per dm cubed per second moles per dm cubed per second. Now I'll look back at this rate constant here. Moles per dm cubed, moles per dm cubed. Yes, yes. Uh, I just forget, it's only, it's usually only, yeah, it's usually only the rate constant we have to be wary about the uh, the units. The rate of reaction is just usually moles per dm cubed. I just had to make sure that I wasn't saying anything wrong there. So yeah, calculus, that's, that, that's what I meant by that. So hopefully you can understand what I meant by that. So you can be given rate, a rate equation and told to calculate the rate constant, as I just said, given some concentration data. For example, the rate equation for the product uh, ICL is rate is equal to 2. Uh, I've just put in 1 in here to show that the order is 1. I say I've put in 1. The Seneca have done that before they, they do me in for plagiarism. If, if they do me in for plagiarism, they can pretty much strike me for all my videos in it. But it is what it is. Uh, I've just put the... As, the 1 is there to show you the order. But in reality, in maths, you never really write 1 when we're talking about indices. We, we never... Technically... I can put, you know, 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 to the power of 1. We all know that's technically that's the, that's the case, right? But we never really write that. You know, we just say, we just say um, 1 as it is. But I just put it here just for the sake of people understanding it, right? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'll try to try and just continue on the video. Um, yeah, so, so rate equations for the, for the product of ICL, rate is equal to K, I2 times by Cl2. Uh, given the concentration of I2 and Cl2 are 1 mole per dm cubed and the rate of the reaction is 40 moles per dm cubed uh, per time. In this case, that will be per second. Um, is it in this case per second? I can't even say it, but in this case, it would be second because we haven't got... In this case, assume it's just per time. Just write per time because they've given you that. Uh, if you wanted to work out the rate constant, so we know that R is equal to R is equal to K. You can, I can just see this because I've done many examples, but I'm going to write, I'm going to rearrange the equation afterwards by just showing you what we have here. I2 Cl2. If I wanted to work out, rearrange this equation to work out K, as I said, I can see this first time, but uh, I'll just do it out like this so that people, everyone can just see what I've done. Um, so I'm not moving too quickly. That's all I've done there. So if I, if I want to work out that. K, we already, we already know that they told us that the uh, the rate of the reaction is 40 moles per dm cubed uh, per time. So 40 over, and it told us that the uh, that the concentration of, of both reactants are 1 mole per dm cubed. So over 1 times by 1, as you can clearly tell here, 1 times over 1 is just 1 anyway. 40 over 1 uh, is just going to be 1. So the rate constant is 40. But the, we have to work out the the, uh, the the units for this. Now, I'm going to show you why it's important to make sure you get the units correct here. Because different, it can be, you might get a wrong answer. I can just see this first time. And you don't expect you always to do an equation for it. But I'm just going to show you what I mean here. So... Moles, the rate of reaction is always represented by moles per dm cubed per time. And now we've got moles per dm cubed in our in our concentration we've got moles per dm cubed times by moles per dm cubed or moles per dm cubed squared, right? You could put you can probably put that down as moles per dm cubed. Uh, you know I will just do it as moles per dm cubed squared actually. Yeah. 
So I'm just kind of doing a bit of a... There you go. All right. Uh, if that's multiple per dm cubed squared, that means that I've... You know what? I should have just done the other way around. I'm so sorry about these people. Um, you know what? No, I'm, I'm messing around way too much. I'm sorry about this. I'll just I'll just keep it simple. I'm not gonna try and be extra. I can I can do it. I can still do it the other way, but I want to try and show you. If I do it the other way, it's harder for me to show you exactly what I want to do. Uh, so I'll do like this. So all I'm doing here is I'm cancelling out, cancel out that, cancel out that. That's multiple dm cubed, multiple dm cubed. But now I've got, I'm stuck with this now. So, um, so I say I'm stuck with this. This is what, I've, what I want. I'm trying to work out the rate of this equation. So it actually is, the rate of this equation is actually moles to the power of minus one because it's what is, all I have here is t to the power of minus one over moles per dm cubed. We always represent it as moles per dm cubed per time, right? So I have moles to the power of minus one dm cubed, as just normal cubed, per time. Now, if I look back at here, it did say, yeah, uh, moles to the power of minus one per dm cubed uh, to the power to, uh, sorry, moles per dm cubed per time. 